What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Explore USA RV Supercenter in Bernie, Texas, and we're gonna take a look at this insanely long, Longhorn travel trailer. This thing is massive, over 38 feet long. You heard me right, this thing is over 38 feet long. It is pretty much a fifth wheel, but a travel trailer. I'll explain more when we get inside. Dual AC units, this thing's gonna be heavy. Anyways, let's take a closer look at this thing. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, before we get started, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So it's got a GBWR of 11,250 pounds. This is a heavy unit. Unloaded weight or dry weight is 9,060 pounds and has a cargo capacity of 2,150 pounds. This is a very, very long, very heavy, very tall travel trailer. What type of truck can haul this? Really, I would recommend a three quarter ton truck with a lot of payload capacity or a one ton single rear wheel truck or dually with a lot of cargo capacity. Mainly, you want a truck that can handle the length of this unit. This is a very, very long and tall travel trailer and it's heavy. So you want something that's gonna give you the best overall experience. Anyways, let's take a quick look around the outside of this unit and see what it's all about. Two propane cans up front, electric front tongue jack, you have space for two batteries right here. You have a power disconnect on board, which is really nice. This does have electric stabilizers on the front and back. Let's take a look up front. Very thin baggage doors, but this is a smaller door, so it's not that important. Uh, it's a half pass through, so it goes about halfway in. Not very large. You could definitely carry a lot of your supplies, like your RV equipment inside there. Rack and pinion slide here, and I can see rack and pinion slide in the back as well. This rides on a 10 inch I-beam frame. Honestly, I was gonna guess it would be a 12 inch I-beam frame, so a little smaller than I thought. Here's another side baggage door. You can see how the door is a little crooked, and that's, again, one of the reasons I talk about the thickness of these doors is they tend to be more rigid when it's a thicker material. This is gonna be underneath your bed in the bedroom. More storage. It's carpeted in there though, so keep that in mind. You don't wanna throw anything too nasty in there. You have two sewer connections here. That's gonna be a gray tank connection. You can tell by the smaller diameter tubing. And then this is gonna be black tank and gray tank. So one side will probably come from the kitchen and the other side will be your black tank. You have an outside shower. Outside of your furnace, you have a 50 amp connection here because you have twin AC units. Black tank flush outside of your water heater. This is gonna have some Lodestar tires on it. I would definitely recommend upgrading the suspension and the tires after getting a unit like this. I'd put something like maybe even F-rated Goodyear Endurance, maybe even upgrade to 16-inch G-rated wheels and tires, and then put something like a Easy Flex or a Moride Cree 3000. Just upgrade the suspension to help prevent some of the transfer of road vibration into the unit. Coming around this way, that's an exhaust vent above your stove. On this side, you have a freshwater quick drain valve down there. You basically pull a lever and it drains your freshwater tank really quickly if you need to. City water connection, this is gonna be your water tank fill. It says incandescent lighting, I believe. Uh, yeah, incandescent lighting back here. Would have really liked to see all LED lighting. The side lights are LED. So the side light is LED, but the backlight right here is incandescent. I just would have assumed go to all LED. You have your cable satellite hook up there, your spare tire on the bumper. It is nice that they still give you a four inch bumper on the back. You can throw your sewer hose in there. And it also gives you a little bit of protection if heaven forbid you bump into something. You have your window right here. Coming around. This is also a rack and pinion slide. So I do like the fact that all the slides are rack and pinion. It has your electric stabilizer on the back as well. A lot of windows on this side. You have two awnings, which is nice. You have an awning on the slide here and then you have another awning right here. So it gives you a lot of protection over here. You have the LCI solid step with the deeper step up top here. Cable and power if you wanna set a TV out here. Would have been nice if they put a mount for a TV to hang on the side. Controls for your stabilizer. Then it has three year structural warranty from Crossroad. You have a little bottle opener slash leash holder right here. And this is the 340RE Lone Star. 
step inside. It is solar ready. It says it is wired for the ZAMP solar system on top. So that generally means there's a pass through on top. So if you throw solar panels up there, you can get the wires in. You might be wondering why these seats are facing that way. It's because they are independent swivel recliners. So they just put them that way so they're not moving around. You can see the booth style dinette has already been converted into a bed, probably to show somebody. Has some nice accent trimming above the dinette area. The valances are actually pretty nice as well. Ceiling height in here is going to be probably around 6, 7. You have your gas electric refrigerator, three burner cooktop, small compact microwave, plus a lot of Texas theme going on in here from your poles to your glass itself. That is really cool. They also put a wine freezer in here. You can put drinks in here, bottled drinks, things like that as well. Lots of pantry space. Really nice size island. And it looks like there may be bar stools somewhere because you have a spot here for a couple bar stools. Plus you have a dual basin stainless steel sink, which is really nice. A lot of times you'll see a plastic sink. A lot of countertop in this area over here. This unit's going to have an MSRP of right under $50,000. More likely you'll probably be in the mid to high 30s on something like this. It is stick and tin, so the side walls are wood framed with aluminum siding over them. Nice swivel for the TV here. Little panoramic fireplace. And then I thought there'd be some storage back here, but there's not. More cabinets, again, all very Texas themed all the way through. Even you have the Lone Star here up on the valance. A lot of light that comes into this unit. You know, with so many units now offering these flip-up counters on the end, it's always something I check. This turns into a huge bed, so this will fold out. And I believe this is going to be a jackknife bed. So, let's see here. Yeah, it's a jackknife sofa, so it doesn't fold out into like a real long bed here. It basically folds flat into a, probably a little bigger than a twin-size bed. Then you have your two recliners right here that are strapped in place. And your dinette is all already folded into its sleeping position. Stepping back, thermostat right here. Again, you have two AC units, one in the front, one in the back. And what you're seeing is a very fifth wheel style floor plan with a lot of room. I mean, it's a large fifth wheel style floor plan. Typically in an RV like this, you would see the wall like right here, a smaller island, and this unit would be about four feet shorter than it currently is because they'd shave off space around the stove area. And then back here, the bathroom would be more compact. But as you can see, you got a lot of wardrobe space here. You got a good size shower, nice cornered sink area, plenty of room in front of the toilet. It is a porcelain foot flush toilet, which is also really nice. But yeah, so typically maybe two feet off of here, maybe three feet off of here, and that's you know, that's the five feet that might make up the difference between this and a traditional rear living room style travel trailer like this. Plus king size bed. And it is a side facing bed instead of a front to back, which actually takes up more room because now they have to give you a much larger closet space up front. So you have a huge closet area up here. Again, this feels like you're in the front of a fifth wheel. You have your second Coleman mock air conditioning system. You have some storage above the bed place for a washer and dryer and just check out how deep this is from here to there is probably four feet of course it gets a little shallower at the top and the bottom but that is a huge space and it is prepped for a washer and dryer two windows right here some nice wardrobe storage here and a place to hang your tv on the wall you have a nice sliding door this is definitely going to be on the more affordable side of an rv this size if you were looking at like a flagstaff you'd probably be in the $65,000 range for something similar to this. Um, it would be constructed differently. It would use a bit more high-end materials in certain areas. The interior would probably be roughly the same, but you'd probably, again, pay roughly $15,000 more for that unit to get the fiberglass side, the torsion axles, things like that. So again, it's all about compromise. You get a lot of space in a unit like this, relatively affordable price, very fifth wheel like but again i would not haul this behind a half ton truck ever ever i wouldn't even hitch a half ton truck up to it just to see what it looks like i would put this behind a three quarter ton truck with at least i'm going to say at least 2500 pounds worth of payload capacity 
um, and even maybe a one ton single rear wheel truck just for that extra weight so you can manage something like this a little bit better. But that's just my opinion, that's my feedback. You know, if you choose to do what you choose to do, that is entirely on you, but I can almost guarantee if you put this behind a half ton truck, you will have a horrible, horrible towing experience. You'll be stressed out, especially if it gets windy or when larger units pass by you, or if you're going over construction zones or through construction zones that have the cement rails on each side and you're having to kind of thread the needle through it. This is not the type of thing you want to tow behind a truck that's not necessarily designed to tow something like this. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.